Good afternoon, preppers. Welcome to Goshen Prepping. Having a Faraday cage to protect your electronic devices for a nuclear attack or an EMP is vital, especially in our modern times. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's actually really easy. Now I came out with a video just like this previously, but I did some changes and updated it to make it even better. So let's get right to it. Okay, first off, a couple different things we can use for Faraday cages. One of the simplest and easiest is simply just a all metal trash can. Now, uh, before we get into it, let me kind of show you what I have on the inside. I actually have thick freezer bags for everything on the inside because you don't want your devices to come in contact with the edges, especially if the device has a metal casing because this can become ionized, even though we have a couple things we'll do to try to counteract that. So you can see in here, I have a couple hard drives, family files, all backed up, home movies, etc. I also have in here, my nuclear radiation detector, which of course were, was, is gonna be very important. I'll link this below. In fact, I'll link all this stuff below if you wanna take a look. But obviously you gotta keep this inside the Faraday cage because being electronic, well, if you have a nuclear detonation, this is gonna get fried too. And of course you wanna be able to tell where the nuclear radiation is. Again, just simply put them in their freezer bags. I like these freezer bags because they're so thick as opposed to just like regular like Ziploc bags. I have a couple uh, hand crank radios to keep in there as well as a GPS unit. Of course, I like using, relying on uh, old school maps, but if you actually have a coordination of a bug out area, et cetera, a GPS unit might actually be handy as well. And something people don't think about, flashlights and lanterns, because uh, this is not the 1970s anymore, and we actually have like old school light bulbs. No, practically all your flashlights and lanterns are LED, which means they're gonna get fried in nuclear detonation as well. So I have lanterns and flashlights put in here as well. Okay, now the last thing that doesn't necessarily have to go in here, but I do because of two reasons. Number one, well, it's iodine, by the way. It's number one, because when it comes to iodine, potassium iodide tablets, 130 milligrams for adult doses, this can actually get what's called through neutron activation and actually become radioactive as well. So you wanna make sure this is protected. Now, it's not gonna get fried like from an EMP, but if you're actually close to a detonation, it can actually mess up your tablet. So you know what? Honestly, it's the best place to put them in here anyway, because that way, if this does happen, then they're all one spot. I have a big family, by the way, plus a couple extra bottles in case neighbors or something like that. Those are the adult doses. I also have some uh, child doses, you know, for the younger kids. And then for the baby, I have the uh, liquid doses so we can actually, um, you know, give it to the infants as well. All right, so that's what I have everything in here. And just simply put the cover on. Now, with that in mind, I want, you to, I want to show you something. People go through this long rigmarole of talking about how you need to put foil tape on this. And foil tape, you know, you can just use the cheapy stuff if you want to use the foil tape from your local hardware store. You don't have to go for the expensive stuff, but it's got to be a foil. And basically, on this, right here is this edge is actually what we're worried about. Now, notice that this way this works is this one's like this, and then the lid overlaps it like this. The odds of actual any radiation getting in through here and bouncing back and hitting it is pretty much nil. It's pretty much not gonna happen. So in my opinion, you don't need to have this foil tape on here. If you wanna put it on as an extra precaution, it's a piece of cake, but of course, getting into and out of it, you're gonna mess up the tape every single time. Now, if you've seen the previous video, here's the changes. Grounding your device. I actually have a contact person in the government who works on doing huge Faraday cages, building size Faraday cages for the government and the military. And he said it has to be grounded, essential to be grounded. But and this is actually where I think probably in our house, you probably don't have to ground your Faraday cage because that metal can, although it will become ionized, it will become charged. It actually could have it so you could get shocked off of it. I think it's going to be incredibly minor if that's the case, almost like static electricity shock. So previously I showed how to ground it, hooking it up to your electrical outlet. And I had some electrician friends saying, you know, that might not be the best idea. And I said, you're absolutely right. So I'm personally gonna recommend for this specific size device, grounding is probably not important, but just be ready in case there actually was a nuclear attack and you have to get into your Faraday cage. You might want to, uh, well, be ready for like a little bit of a zap from it. I don't think it's gonna happen though. So I'm gonna go ahead and admit and skip the whole uh, grounding part. We have the same thing when it comes to a giant ammo box. I mean, this is obviously a really big one. In here, I have one of my solar generators, oops, which is actually on. 
Okay, so we'll take that. Notice this thing fits in here nicely. It's also nice too. You can put a couple laptops in, you know. Now here's the thing, this laptop does have a metal casing on it. It'd be best to put it in some kind of plastic bag. I mean, like the little Walmart bags are probably too thin, but keeping it something separate, even if you actually put cardboard around it, an insulator keeps it separate from this, you'll be good to go. Now the lid for this, notice on this side it has these lips. The odds of radiation coming around and going up through there is pretty slim. On this side too, same thing, you have a little lip, it's not as big as it was, and then there's this rubber gasket. Now, I will tell you that there's other videos out there that tell you to take off the rubber gasket and all that stuff. Take off the rubber gasket is not, taking it off is not necessary. You do not need to do that. That is like redundancy. At the very least, if you wanna be super safe on this, I mean, it's understandable, it has like your computer. You put this on, and then, you take your foil tape and simply just cover around the edges. And radiation will not get in there if you do that. And that's all you need to do. Again, if you can ground this, the same technique, basically we grounded the other one as well, that'd be really good. But we actually, whatever you can do to completely encompass and encase any electronic devices would be a good thing. Of course, having devoted uh, items like this works out really well. All right, again, super easy. So all the items I could possibly do, I linked in the description below, so you can pick them up and make one of your own as well. Like and subscribe and share this video because a lot of people want to understand how to do it too. Thanks for watching.